once again to discuss things. The Superman television show. Yes, Superman on the CW coming at you in your faces. Yeah. Hi everyone. Welcome to another episode of Geeky Gentlemen. I'm Sid Partu. Joining me today is. What's up? I'm that Matt kid. And it is only that Matt kid oh, because, man. as we've we've discovered, there are just there's there's me and then there's disappointments on this show and today matt's matt's not one of the disappointments <laughs> no matt is the only disappointment on this show today <laughs> i'm just waiting for you to like like we're gonna get like 10 minutes in and you're like oh oh shit man, i, I got a thing i have a, i have a i have some stuff to do at the place <laughs> Anyway, Matt, what are we talking about today? Uh, we are talking Besides about... Besides betrayal. Um, betrayal? Uh, we are talking about the pilot to Superman and Lois on the CW. Um, I I saw that it was on HBO Max, um, and I was like, oh, cool, I can watch this now. Um, so I gave the pilot and the first five episodes, or however many are on HBO Max, a watch. Uh, but I figured the pilot is a good, good beefy one hour of of pure unadulterated content that we could talk about. Hashtag content. Hashtag content. Um, I thought it would be cool to talk about because it is kind of the the hip new live action take on Superman, uh, kind of in in opposition in some ways to the the Zack Snyder take on Superman. At least that's a, the way a lot of people have framed the discussion around. Uh, Tyler Hochin is, is his name, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's been a lot of this discussion of, of his take on the character and the writer's take on the character in this show in the context of, of kind of comparing and contrasting with uh, Snyder Superman and, and Henry Cavill. And I, I don't want to focus on that entirely, but it is interesting that that discussion has, has popped up. Um, and of course, I just wanted to talk about the show itself because it's the new CW superhero hotness, and you know they have a, a pretty a pretty fucking big backlog in history at this point. It's pretty crazy, honestly. It goes back to what, like 2011 when Arrow started up, or like 10 years into CW superhero shows, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. I mean, well, yeah. I mean, like longer than that if you consider like Smallville and shit. But yeah, I mean, but like this verse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, CW laid that foundation with Smallville, and then and then they they've kind of had that modern, uh, big shared universe with um, Arrow and, and all these things. And for all of the CW show's faults, a lot of them will go to some cool places. Uh, you know, a lot of them will go to some trash places. But there's a lot of fun to be had uh, if you can kind of sift your way through a lot of the garbage. Um, I mean, I just think that's like comics, right? Uh, yeah. Like, you know, you just kind of prepare there's going to be some bad issues or, or like, a bad arc or something. Um, I quit watching a lot of the CW stuff after Flash Season 2 really, really let me down with, with the, like, really bad season finale that that had. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I'll catch things every now and again. I know Haley, um, when she was pregnant with Leah, Haley was watching through the Supergirl show. Yeah. Um, and that's what this is. It's so funny to me that the Superman show spins off of the Supergirl show. Uh, try to wrap your head around that one, but um, it's 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 interesting. Um, I don't quite get like, you know, I, I don't I don't understand the continuity of this series or or like the placement of it because from what little I saw of the Superman show, like. I remember seeing baby Jonathan Kent and Tyler Holchin doesn't look like he's supposedly aged like 15 years since that. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, what is going on? Yeah, I mean, tell you the truth, I, I have very little context going into this because I mostly watched Arrow um, mm-hmm. and fell off of Arrow like season five or some shit like that. 
Um, and I watched like the first season of Flash, the first season of Supergirl, and I just didn't. And I, you know, I thought those were all they all had their different qualities and whatever. But I just never really had a deep dive into Arrowverse. So by the time they got to the point where they were doing the big hefty crossovers, because I mean, obviously, Supergirl was originally its like own thing that got folded mm-hmm. into Arrowverse, and so by the time they were being doing the big like Crisis on Infinite Whatevers. I just wasn't really following it. So going into this show, um, you're right. It it is a lot like comics. You know, it's a lot like, hey, I haven't been keeping up with DC continuity overall, but there's this like, you know, Tom King's about to start this Supergirl book. So I'm going to pick that up and read it. And that's kind of what this almost feels like. It's like, hey, I haven't been keeping up with this universe, but there is this like Superman series that I kind of want to watch. And um, it's cool that it's approachable in that way because, like, you're right, it, it probably doesn't totally make sense with the Arrowverse continuity that's preceded it, but that hasn't been a detriment to me so far, having not really knowing that continuity. I mean, I'm sure there's, like, an explanation. I, I remember asking Alfie about it, and he said something about it has to do with Crisis, but I, I just don't have enough context to really know. Yeah, It's just, it's just like, kind of jarring to see superman with like teenage sons kind of thing um yeah but like it's kind of funny because we've done so many superman shows but it's been like i mean i guess you had superman and lois and that was that was a while ago like 90s late 80s so you've been like almost 30 years since you've just done a straight superman show Mm-hmm. There's there's always some like weird asterisk to it, um, which is just I don't know it's it's surprising, uh, especially today with all the modern stuff. It, it still cracks me up that there's never been a Batman show since the sixties. Yeah, um, that is crazy to me. Yeah, they, they they always go to Superman for TV for some reason. Um, but yeah, I don't know it's 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 a weird little little thing. Again, I think it's so bizarre that that the Superman series spins out of the Supergirl show. I'm just like, really? <laughs> if you told me that like 10 years ago, I'd be like, no fucking way. <laughs> um, but anyway, it's, yeah, it's definitely got its moments. Um, I, I'd seen this episode. I, I actually, because, you know, I like Superman. I wanted to, to catch it. Um, I saw this when it premiered a, a month or two back. Um, and, and I watched it then. And so I was re-watching it uh, just the other night. And I'm like, it's it's pretty good. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I guess I'm just in this place where I don't have a ton I I know I want to say about it outside of just how perplexing the circumstances of of its existence are to me. Yeah, I mean it, it's like it feels like it took a lot to get us to the point where it's just like, hey, let's just tell a simple story about Superman and Lois moving back to. Uh... Smallville and having to take care of their kids and deal with like some intrigue and stuff like that. And it's like that seems like a no brainer premise to to do, but the fact that it took like a decade of Arrowverse, a Supergirl show, that Tyler Hochin showing up in that Supergirl show and then doing a big crossover where we brought back Brandon Routh as like Kingdom Come Superman, it took like all of that to just get us to this point is is admittedly very very amusing to me yeah yeah that's kind of where i'm at with it too um anyway as far as like things about the show itself yeah i i think the thing that's getting a lot of praise about this is the characterization um yeah and and i do quite like the way that that he's characterized and he's playing superman um he does he does a good job with that like i love the um you know thanks my mom made it uh Mm -hmm. little moment just plays it completely genuine and that's that's really really cool um and i like the way that that he's operating and he's just trying to help out and and you just get a very um it's just such a straight unapologetic like there's there's no there's no angst to it there's no the the man beneath the cape kind of thing there's there's just like almost off the page Superman in a way, and it, 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 it's not self conscious in its portrayal of the character 
like I feel a lot of things try to be when whenever they touch Superman, they they are like, oh yeah, we're doing Superman, but like it's not your dad's Superman. <laughs> like this is your dad's Superman, and your dad has good taste. <laughs> yeah, he's he's fantastic. I mean, he feels uh, very human. He feels he feels perfectly relatable despite being you know op off the page Superman. It's so funny to me because that 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 opening scene because that whole bit where he's like you know thanks my mom made it that's like the first two minutes of the show mm-hmm. and like people would would spread that clip around like crazy when this first dropped and you have you know people who are big fans of comic book superman or at least this sort of traditional comic book superman uh really praising it and a lot of people who were more in, you know, the Snyder camp or what have you, who just thought it was, like, corny and silly, and they're like, why would you want a whole show that's just corny and stupid and silly? And I'm like, well, as you watch the rest of the episode, like, it's, it's, he's not just a one-note corny. Like, Clark uh, is right out the page, but he also, he, he struggles, he, he has family issues, he has to deal with, like, he is a fully human and relatable and compelling protagonist without having to resort to the gimmicks of being super angsty and depressed all the time and you get to have your corny uh fun superman cake and eat it too because we actually have a very solid characterization underneath all the 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 kind of fun one-liners and stuff like that so it was um it was just really cool to see because i really did not have much experience with tyler hochen's superman because i i really didn't watch much of the arrowverse stuff by the time he was introduced um, and so this was, uh, I was, I was really pleasantly surprised by how much I really liked his take. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Um, it just, it's, it doesn't, um, it doesn't really stir the pot. It's, it's, there's, there's, I think, a, an attempt or a, a temptation when writing the the DC characters in particular, I feel the Marvel characters are a little more freewheeling with this. But like, when people write the DC characters, they they always seem tempted to do something different, to put a new spin, to to like bring a, a new voice to them or whatever. And they very rarely like will those those takes kind of stick. You know, sometimes they do, sometimes they linger on painfully. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, very rarely do those work. We kind of always end up reverting back to, like, the... I guess what you'd call, like, the meta-narrative of the character, where it's not necessarily, like, the character's always been written this way all this time, but more like there's, like, a general vibe to them um, that we always kind of, you know, drift back to. Right. And... Like, I think there's a respectability to just accepting that as, as a writer or as an actor portraying the character and just doing that as opposed to trying to impose your take, your opinions, your um, preconceived notions upon them. And obviously there's, like, some level of that that has to happen, you know, human experience and yada yada. But, like... I don't feel like I'm burdened by a take here. I feel like this is just Superman, which is very refreshing. Yeah, I think it's especially so when, again, that that whole, the big, um, I guess, discussion is comparing this take to the other currently big take, which is the, the Snyder, you know, Snyder versus Superman. And so I think that whole discussion has been has been elevated just because you have these two almost... I don't want to say competing, but almost, you know, competing takes in the public eye. Um, And so I feel like it feels even more refreshing since we've had the DCEU being what it is and not really handling Superman in in a way that um, feels authentic, at least to me. Um, It always Mm -hmm. felt like uh, exactly like you said, like they're burdened by their own desire to have the take that makes Superman relatable and interesting to modern audiences and it turns out you can do that pretty easily by just writing the character um Mm -hmm. uh, and and it was cool to see that here yeah i mean one of the other things i like is we get some cool action and stuff um Mm -hmm. you know i I don't know how long it's been since you've watched any of the the reeve movies but like 
they they took the best idea from Superman 3 and did it, which was pretty cool, with the um, saving the nuclear reactor by by doing the cold breath and stuff. I thought that was pretty neat, uh, that they, they kind of, you know, and maybe it's not directly pulled from that, but that's literally what he does in that movie, is, is there's a nuclear meltdown, he goes and freezes, like, a body of water, and then just lifts it and, and lets it melt over the reactor and, and cool everything down and I'm like that's so great <laughs> it's it's so cool to to see that brought back and just mm-hmm. you know visualize really cool um obviously when he when he catches the car uh in the beginning it's you know it's a freaking PT cruiser and and it's green and it's it's trying its best to recreate the the cover of action number one without like him smashing the car right <laughs> so i thought that was that was a, a cool little thing to do um got a you know in the first episode at least you get a decent fight with a a surprisingly powerful villain uh with with mysterious you know <laughs> backdrop of something general luther and he's black Ooh. um yeah, which is cool. And I'm and I'm I'm actually kind of imp- and maybe I just haven't been in the superhero TV watching space in a while. But I was I was, um, and and this is not a huge thing to me. I can live with crappy effects. But honestly, I thought everything here looked pretty good. Um, you know, yeah, the action yeah. sequences were fun. Uh, the bit with the <laughs> the bit with the ice is just so great and comic booky and awesome. I, I didn't realize the Superman three connection because it's been I think I've maybe seen it once, like a decade ago. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, the action sequences are very fun. It it does a very good job of of let's let's have this um, really kind of cool premise of we're going back to Smallville and we find out there's some like shady stuff going on in like Smallville and like people buying farms and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, that's really cool. That's like a really cool like big main story arc. But you get to have that and also have the the big punch fights and stuff like that. Um, and I mean, really, like I just I'm I'm blown away because I feel like this pilot gives you little snippets of like everything you would want from Superman, and I feel like it does them all pretty like pretty well. It gives you the the reporter stuff, it gives you the the family drama stuff, it gives you the action stuff, the science fiction, and it all is done well and good and played straight. And so I'm I guess the more I talk about it, the more I'm just like, yeah, I mean this 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 really ticks like every box I feel like you could possibly want ticked. Mm-hmm. No, for sure. Um, the thing I guess I'm interested in with it long term, and, and you've seen episodes, so you could tell me if this happens or not. Um, uh, from what I did see of Supergirl, I really, really loved John Cryer's take on Lex Luthor. Um, mm-hmm. It's like this perfect blend of that like Gene Hackman like eccentricity kind of goofiness, but like that that comic book like scary intelligent um like there's one scene where he's he's trying to figure out how to do a thing and he's just like talking out loud going step by step through like what he needs to do and i just it's so impressive because he goes i'll need lena to get it done for me hmm but she hates me there's no way in hell she'll ever help me unless yep I need to give myself cancer. And then he just like steps inside like a radioactive room and like presses the button to, and to get cancer. And I'm like, whoa. Um, it's a really great scene. So like on on one level, it's kind of cool that we get like this mysterious Luther-esque character. We don't really know what his deal is in, in the pilot. But on the other hand, I'm like, oh man, I really want John Cryer to come back as, as Lex and face off against... Holchin Superman and I don't really know I don't even know if he's alive anymore or not if they, they killed him off or something but I, I hope that happens because god damn he just did the role so well for like the little bits I'd seen yeah that's I've only seen a couple bits of, of Cryer's uh, Luthor I've heard really good things um, I mean I can I can give slight spoilers if that's okay if we want to I mean, sure. Why not? What's what's coming? What's up with General Luther? Yeah. So you know, no, non spoiler. Uh, it's good. Go watch it. Um, but so like, I've only seen a handful of episodes after because I think it's only literally like five episodes on HBO Max. Um, which I don't know. Maybe that's all that's been made. I don't know. I think that is. Okay. 
Yeah, I mean, he's he's a Lex Luthor from a parallel Earth where Superman mm-hmm. was evil. <laughs> so it's oh. like, it, at least that's that's what I've gathered so far. He's he he was in the military on like a parallel Earth where Superman somehow caused a bunch of death and destruction and it might have been inadvertent um i i I, again i've i've re-watched the pilot but i only watched the other few episodes like once and i I was doing something else in the meantime um so that's i believe what it is um which is you know see i think i think what they're kind of doing there is that that gives you a chance to like literally in your story do the comparison of like like the more like we kind of said that traditional superman versus someone who almost is kind of like 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 we talk about how it seems like everything coming out these days that's popular has evil superman like injustice had evil superman the upcoming suicide squad game has evil superman uh snyderverse (laughs) had evil superman in the in the in the future nightmare superman yeah (laughs) He had uh, he had evil Superman in the nightmare timeline. So it's like it's almost like we have a character who whose only view of Superman is that like super evil Superman that like we can't get out of our popular culture. And so we then get to compare his outlook to what we truly know Superman to be. So I think I think there's actually kind of an interesting thing that they they may be doing with that. Um, So I'm, I'm curious to see exactly where that goes. And I'm also curious to see how connected, if at all, that becomes to the whole plot with uh, uh, Morgan Edge or whatever his name is. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm curious to see if those two plots end up uh, coalescing at some point. Um, Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, It's interesting. You reminded me of a um, a comic strip from... um... Max, the comics guy who does comics about comics. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he does Um, those little, like, cartoon comics. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a great one where it's like, you know, Justice League or whatever end up on an Earth with the evil Superman. They just go, you know, there's so many of these. We got really lucky that our Superman didn't turn evil. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> I love it. It was like, yeah, that's, that's a good point. There's just so many evil Superman universes. There's, there's probably more evil versions of Superman than, like, good versions when you really... When you really break it down, mm-hmm. um, yeah, Morgan Edge. Why does that name sound familiar? I'm pretty sure it's got to be a comic book character, right? Um, like I was reading his like bio in the Arrowverse wiki, and they're mm-hmm. like, okay, first first two sentences of Morgan Edge. Morgan Edge is the former corrupt CEO of Edge Global. Uh, a real estate mogul, National City. Um, he was arrested and incarcerated for his crimes of lead poisoning and the attempted murder of Lena Luthor. Okay. And I'm just. Oh, like, wow, he's a Jack Kirby character. Okay. Huh. Um, so it looks like he's just like sleazy businessman who isn't Lex Luthor from the the sounds of things. Okay, I was just curious if that's like a like a deep pull or something, uh, which I guess it kind of is. But I was like, is it like a Lex identity? Now I'm trying to remember the name of the guy from Superman Three. Fuck. Couldn't tell you. Because there's like, yeah, there's like Diet Lex Luthor in Superman Three, and I can't remember who he is. That's fun. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh, now I've got. I'm fucking. I'm googling it. This is, <laughs> this is what you get. When the Superman fan, quote unquote, I'm, um, uh, f- you know, geeky gentleman fan theory, Alfie doesn't actually like Superman. Um, yeah, well, he doesn't. He doesn't hate the trunks, so therefore he doesn't actually like Superman. Because true Superman fans do nothing but bitch about how much they hate the trunks. This is a fact. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, Ross Webster, so damn it. That would have been cool if that was like Morgan Edge too. Anyway, um like deep pulls from the bad Superman movies. Yeah, no, I mean fucking Alfie made a whole drag a uh, whole DC fan series where where he kicked fucking Superman out of the DC universe and and he's not on Kiki Gentleman to talk about Superman, so yeah, he's fucking fucking anti Superman shill. He's he's not a super fan, he's a he's a super loser. Um mm-hmm. <laughs> agreed agreed yeah yeah hard evidence 
confirmed. Uh, anyway, um, I don't know. Like the Morgan Edge plot is is interesting. That's that kind of just seems like one of those things that screams of we want to have Lois actually have something to do in the series, mm-hmm. and she'll likely be like trying to take down Morgan Edge. And I, if I had to guess, like either Morgan Edge is deeply connected to the villain arcing plot of the series in some way, or that's like Lois's little path to victory thing, and that's what like gets them the house and farm in fall or whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, I I hope that more the Morgan Edge plot uh, ends up factoring into just kind of the overall. Um, I, I I do hope those two plot uh, do those two plots end up converging because um, I actually we we talk a lot about like this take on Superman because he's you know it, that's the big thing we're comparing is the different takes of Superman. And again, I, I don't um, I probably haven't read as much with her as, as maybe you guys have. But I also really like this take on Lois a lot because I'm I've never been a big fan of the Amy Adams Lois. Um, hmm. And I, I really like this Lois Lane a lot, um, uh, especially when you get into later season or later episodes um, when she starts actually doing uh, she starts like writing some articles and doing some local journalism and, and like fact finding and all that stuff like. I feel like they do give her a lot to do that obviously is, you know, not as big and punchy as Superman going and fighting this like super powered dude. But like she is um, definitely she does have her own plot going on that will, you know, maybe converge with the other one. But the point is, I I really like this Lois a lot. Um, I like the kind of discussion she has with um, uh, with Lana and Lana's husband, who's just a dick. (laughs) Um, that he's whole, a dick, that but like thing. a dick with a point, you know. That yeah. like he'd easily be a crypto freak in fucking um, in Smallville, you know. <laughs> that whole bit when they're at the table is really funny to me. When he's like, "Oh, no one's reading your paper anymore because you journalists can't keep your politics out of your stories." Um, and like the whole discussion Lois has, where you know it's like, you know, he's. Morgan Edge will come in and he'll he'll buy these things and he'll give people jobs, but he'll 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 pay them like super minimum wage and like all this stuff and um, you know just the back and forth that they have it feels uh, you know it feels fairly relevant it feels very like today um, and it does feel like a natural angle for Lois to take um, and I just mm-hmm. I really like the actress I like the take um, I'm a I'm a fan because uh, again I feel like Tyler Hoach and Superman gets all the attention when we're talking about takes but you know she's the other title character and I, I really like this Lois um, especially as someone who just really never clicked with the Amy Adams Lois no that's fine um, I, I feel kind of bad but at the same time I don't so like I'm, I'm gonna copy an image and I'm gonna put it over here in the Skype and I'll try to remember to put this on the thing but I probably won't because I'm lazy so here's a picture of the actress playing Lois. Yeah. Is she part giraffe? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> it's like the very first shot of her in the episode where they're going through like the flashback thing. And I was just like, I just look over at Haley. I'm like, that woman is like at least 30% neck. <laughs> She's just got the the longest neck to me and I can't help but look at it and I'm like I'm like fucking transfixed by it <laughs> and I realize it's really stupid and petty and it doesn't mean anything but like god damn every time I look at her now I'm just like god you just you have a lot of neck neck, neck <laughs> for days uh huh like it must take you forever to throw up um, <laughs> that is the weirdest <laughs> sentence I've ever heard. He's probably like, <laughs> I guess she does. I, I mean, I'm kind of I'm watching it on mute in the background, and like, yeah, she she, she do have a, she do have a lot of neck. Mm-hmm. I mean, besides that, that's like the thing I've like stupidly hung up on. Maybe it's just like the way they've got her hair or something. It's just accentuating the neck. Mm. But like, it's 
you know, fucking sexist part two. You know, he doesn't talk about Tyler Holchin's lack of Superman swoosh hair, but he'll talk about Lois Lane's neck. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just it, it's very particular part of the the actress that just fucking like lives in my head rent free yeah. now. Um, well, it's funny to me because like Hochin, his performance sells it, but like visually, just when you look at him, like I don't buy him as Clark slash Superman quite as immediately as I bought. Henry Cavill just purely on just looking at them um but then I think a lot of it has to do and and you can rope Tom Welling into this too Henry Cavill Tom Welling they're both cast in large part because they look like Christopher Reeve yeah maybe that's Um, maybe that's part of it he's because Tyler Hochin very much does not fit that like mold so when you look mm -hmm. at him you're just like that's not really how I'm used to visualizing Superman in my head necessarily. Like he doesn't have like quite the level of like crazy fucking jaw that like Cavill has and things like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you really want to, um, Man from Uncle, that's what it is. Have you ever seen Henry Cavill and Man from Uncle? Uh, I have not. Okay, hold on. Let me find a a good pic of him. Um. Because that shit is just, like, distracting. Uh, if you look up Henry Cavill and Man from Uncle, uh-huh. when he's wearing, like, those older suits and stuff, God. he just looks like Christopher Reeve. Yeah, he do. It's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's like, he was cast very specifically for looking like Christopher Reeve. Um, and Tom Welling, to, to a lesser extent, but that was still a big part of it. Um, yeah. And, and so I feel like... Christopher Reeve has just left such a a footprint in that role, I suppose you could say. Mm-hmm. Um, that that now that's just the type of like look we ca- that, that the character is cast for. Yeah. Um, in live action, and and it's kind of hard to get away from that. Um, I think that's a really good point. That that's, I mean, that's honestly probably exactly what it is. He's he just has a little bit of a different look to him. Um, mm-hmm. and, it, and, and while I love his suit, uh, cause like just, I kind of have the same thing that it, like with this suit that I have with like the returns bat suit, like design wise, it's like, oh my God, perfect. But like, there are some things about it that like, I wish could be different. Like, I don't like how much padded muscle and I don't like the like neckline. I pretty much have the same problems with it as Alfie, to be honest. Um, no. um but like mm-hmm. visually overall, it took me a minute to sort of adjust myself to be like, okay, this is Superman. And then by the, by the time I'm, you know, into the episode, I'm just like, yeah, this is Superman. He looks great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just, I, it, with me, I think it's just the hair. Um, like he's got kind of like that spiky hair and that just doesn't necessarily scream Superman to me, but he, he sells it all perfectly yeah. in the performance. He does. Um, he does 100%. Yeah, like I really like the scene with with um, and anytime the the character or the actor has to has to do that persona switch, you know, mm-hmm. I'm always I'm always impressed by those. Yeah. Um, it, it's hard not to say Reeve did it best, particularly when you watch the scene in the Donner cut with the um, with Lois Lane shooting him. Yes, uh huh, yeah, great scene. But. Like, when he asked to show his kids, yeah, I'm Superman, I thought that was a really, really great scene, and, and he, he sold it really well. Um, back to the, the lowest part for a sec. Yeah, I, I think she's... I think the actress is doing a fine job. Um, as far as the pilot goes, she doesn't get a ton to do yet. Um, I think they're doing a, a decent job, like, showing that she's, like, digging into stuff and looking at things, and she's, she's doing a good job of... Um, or, or they're doing a good job writing her and the actress is doing a fine enough job selling it where she's like dealing with the being married to Superman part I think that's um, that's being portrayed pretty well I, I like the dynamic where she's like they're not playing it up like she's mad at him or or that there's a problem with with the way that he's he's going about things it's just like she's reminding him as his wife and as the mother of of his children that he needs to make be making time for them too 
Which is, it's interesting because it puts Superman in a place of having to do something that is both selfless and selfish. Yeah. Because they're his kids, so they do need him. It is still an act for someone else, but it also feels like it's an act for himself when he's putting it off, you know, quote-unquote, important life-saving things. So I think that's, it's an interesting enough uh, vehicle for drama for Superman, so I don't mind that. Yeah, and and there's actually, a, in a later episode, um, when their two kids get into a fight, um, you know, Lois is the one, and, and, and Lois is the one who steps in and is really able to, um, like, the way she's able to immediately meet where her kids are at and just say look jonathan what happened sucks and like jordan listen i understand how you feel and the way she's able to kind of be be almost like a glue for the family um while still being like you said very understanding of what clark has to do as superman um i just i I think they've i think they've written a very solid uh role for her and she gets i I, she does get a lot more to do once you get past the pilot. Um, mm-hmm. What's there, I think, is cool. I like this idea that, like, the Daily Planet has been purchased by a company that's basically trying to turn it into BuzzFeed. <laughs> like, <laughs> like that's really amusing to me. Um, uh, I think that's, again, really cool, because I, I always like those sorts of threats for Superman. Because, like, I feel like when you just lean on the big alien invasions or the big super powerful punch fights, you know, that's cool and all, but also having that, like this other civilian side of Clark's life is also being targeted or, or what have you. I think that, um, I think that's always a really fun angle to play up. So it was cool to see that here as well. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I mentioned him and, and this is kind of the elephant in the room uh, thing for the me. The elephants in the room. Yeah. Yeah. The, the kids, the, the teenage sons of Superman, um, where one is, the jock, uh, Chadley, Chad, Jonathan Kent. Chad, Jonathan, Virgin Jordan. <laughs> it's exactly, you know, it's funny because I was, like I was saying in like the, the group chat, I was like, oh, you know, I just recently read the, you know, that original Super Sons run from 2017. So, oh, so I, yes. so, so I got this, um, cause someone, cause I, I had read Super Sons, um, cause I, I finally, you know, fuck it. It's like 17 issues. I'll go ahead or 16 issues. I'll go ahead and read it. Loved it. By the way, Damien is very quickly becoming a favorite of mine, uh, which Yay, he was, someone else with super sense love. Yeah, Let's he, go. He, I, I never really cared about Damien before until I, I read a good chunk of Morrison's Batman and Robin, um, recently. Mm-hmm. And then I read super sons and then I read Robin number one recently. And I'm just like, I think I'm just a Damien fan. Um, Damien's the best. But um, my name is Damien Wayne. Um, <laughs> so like I um, so like I had read that recently, and I I read online like it mentioned Jonathan or because I, I didn't really know much about the show, but it mentioned that like they 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 like Jonathan was in the show, and I was like oh oh I got this, and I started watching the show, and I was like no I don't got this okay, um, and I think um when we were talking in the group chat um sort of alfie he said that they basically in his mind they kind of took jonathan and 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 split him into two characters i um, don't like i and, disagree yeah, i mean i don't i don't know if i agree with that or not but i because like i said I, i've really only read that i've only read super sons and i've only read it the once and i know jonathan has been written plenty outside of that but just mm-hmm. the idea of giving them two kids I think is probably a decent one um, just because, um, you know, you want to give the boys people to bounce off of. You want to give them that extra conflict. And I mean, this is a C- this is at the end of the day, a CW show. So like we have to have that like teenage drama in there somewhere. But really, I didn't I didn't mind it as much as I thought I would. I, I, I you know, I would prob- probably have really liked to have seen the more comic book Jonathan Kent that I've been reading about lately, but mm-hmm. I didn't mind them. Um, and I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm curious to see, hear your take. You, you maybe have a little bit more history with Superman family from the comics than I do. So I'm, I'm curious to hear your take. I don't know. See, it's weird. Cause I've, I've never read John around just Clark. Yeah. I've always read John with, um, 
with Damien. I've, I've, I became a John Kent fan because of Super Sons. Yeah. Like, I'd, I'd known that uh, Superman had a kid, uh, you know, shortly before Rebirth. Like, it was, you know, he, he got his, his reveal, and then, you know, Tomasi had his run, and I, I thought about reading that, but I just wasn't interested at the time. But then we got, we got Super Sons out of it. And I was like, okay, it's Damien. I, I got to give it at least a shot. I just adored Super Sons yep. and, and the way that John bounced off of Damien and the way they, they worked together. It was just a lot of fun. Sure. It was a really, really good dynamic. And so I obviously got my own problems with the fact that like Bendis decided to age John up just out of nowhere. And like even if, even if I liked what he was doing with John on a character level more than I did I'm kind of neutral on it at best it just it didn't need to age him up and I'm just so sick of it because we've done teenage Superman to death um you know we've we've done it with Connor we've done it with Clark it's just it's you know there's 10 seasons of Smallville right yeah um we've done teenage Superman to death and I'm more interested in like fucking kid Superboy you know yeah. like where he's just a little kid and and you know full of energy and excitement and everything is like just thinks it's cool to have superpowers and that's what you're kind of getting with with Super Sons and and again I don't know how it was in the, in the comics I've heard I've heard worse things about like him in the in the Tomasi like Superman run proper mm-hmm. so then you get this and immediately teenage John Kent and his emotionally scarred brother. I'm like, okay, uh, sure. It's just so funny how it's like introduced. And it turns out Jordan was diagnosed with, I don't even remember what they say he was diagnosed with. It's like social anxiety disorder or something like that. Yeah, it just, it comes out of left, like in the fucking opening scene, I'm like, you could maybe like introduce that as opposed to just tell us about it. Um, yeah, I mean that but... whole opening scene where they're just like, "Here's his backstory." Pa Kent died, yada yada. They had kids. Flash forward fifteen years, like it goes by in like a minute, and you don't even mm-hmm. really get to like they had their Chadley Jonathan, and then they had their problem child. Um, <laughs> and again, like giving Jordan social anxiety disorder or really any sort of like. Um, you know, mental health like thing that he's dealing with that, that again, to me feels like very modern. Like it feels like a very today thing to do. And that's, I'm not saying that in a bad way at all. It's just, it seems like something that is, is there because of kind of where we're at and how mental health is like more of a, a, a known issue these days, especially amongst kids that are like Jordan and Jonathan's age. So like, I think all that makes sense. Um, I think that, the idea that you know their kids or one of their kids would maybe struggle with the fact that their father's not around a lot of the time i think that's fair i think that's a, a pretty decent place to go i think it makes sense um it is weird to me like it was it was like jarring to me that they don't know he's superman like yeah that was and i mean to, in all weird. fairness Okay, so in all fairness, one of the things I do know about John Kent in comics is he doesn't know that Clark is Superman until he's ten years old. Okay. Um, like they they that's part of his backstory is he grows up like with Superman as his hero, and then he finds out his daddy is Superman. Um, which I, I think that's got some interesting stuff to it, but it's one thing when Superman's like lying to Lois when they're just dating or or lying to his friends in order to protect them. Yeah. But I feel like, you know, once once you get to that point, it's weird for him to to be lying anymore. You know? Like it's just it's just a little too uncomfortable. So I think it's a good move in the episode, in the pilot, to give the boys that revelation. Yeah. I sure. feel that's that's like it it's getting the awkwardness of the lying about it thing out of the way really early on. And, and it gives you the, the, oh my God, moment in the, the pilot, which, which helps stir the pot a little bit. Yeah, I mean, if your pitch is that you're going to do uh, essentially a Superman family show, the last thing I want to see is a bunch of drama about Superman trying to keep his like identity a secret from 
his family. Like even, mm. but it, it's like even Lois's dad knows, but his two teenage kids don't know. Is just so. Funny Which is really me. funny because Superman and and uh, General Lane are just like super tight in this. Yeah, they're they're and, bros. Yeah, and the fucking comics like he hates him. <laughs> um, it's like, like there's a, a thing where in the comics initially, like General Lane is is just like super against Superman and he can't stand him and everything. But like Lois gets married to Clark and he's like, eh, well, you sure did pick a fucking worm of a husband, huh, Lois? Whatever, it's fine. And they're like, yeah, well, we have something you need to know about Clark. What's that? Some kind of illness or something I need to be kept aware of? It's like, no, I'm Superman. Hi, hi, Dad. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> <laughs> so to like take that dynamic where like low like general lane's like at one point his job is to like figure out how to take down superman for the u.s government kind of thing and and turn it into you know figure out take the boys fishing this weekend it's just kind of funny um, it's it to, yeah there's a dissonance there you know there it, it is amusing it is again one of those things where i'm just like again i'm i'm kind of glad we don't have the like i gotta keep my secret from the in-laws because that seems like a really easy like lois's dad comes over for dinner and superman has to not has to make excuses for why he keeps leaving the fucking dinner table like it, uh, it, i like that shit though honestly i cannot lie okay that's fair that's fair <laughs> but it does in later episodes i will say this they do start like coming into they do start butting heads in later episodes uh superman okay. and general lane they do really start because like he is not super keen on what they decide to do in the pilot, like move to Smallville and like spend more time together as a family. Like he's super pissed off about that. Cause he's like, Clark, you need to go do Superman things. And Lois is like, dad, our children literally need their father. So like that becomes like a big thing in like the, the upcoming episode. So like, I think them, being established as like big buddies is so that way we can have that like contrast as the show progresses but it is funny given their their general feelings towards each other in the comics yeah um i don't know so getting back to to jordan and jonathan yes. um like there's there's things about it that i like i think jordan kent is a terrible name by the way um <laughs> There's there's things about it that I like well enough um, with them, but I don't know. It, certainly, if I was writing it, that's not the move I would have gone with. You know, like just it's it's a very you're right. It's the CW. They've got to find their drama to mine and and giving you know Superman powers to the mentally unhinged child. Like take a shot if you saw that one coming from oh, a mile take away take a shot for that and for one of them's love interest is Lana's daughter <laughs> take uh, a yeah, shot that was... for that too because that's so <laughs> fucking typical yeah yeah that's a good point I hadn't thought about that one being, being just preparing for it um yeah so like stuff like that I was like eh, okay I guess we're, we're, we're doing this um but it is I, I think Alfie made the point. It is it is a good point. It's like at least putting centering the drama on them and and their thing is a lot better than than centering it on Superman. Um, yeah, I mean, it works better that way. You, what I like is that it gives you a balance because it's not that CW just nonstop teen drama and angst. There is a lot of Superman and Lois being real adult human beings who are like making decisions and like being compelling and stuff and then you get some of that like teen drama that is you know it, even in a comic book if you're like hey i'm gonna write an, an ongoing about superman having a teenage kid you know he, you're gonna touch on like him dating and him trying out for the football team and all this shit so like i'm not opposed to it at all like i, I think it's a it's a very natural place to go it's just there there's there's kind of some mixed results here it's it's not it's not perfect um but you know i'm i'm certainly open to and it's funny because they they do they clearly set, they set it up like oh jonathan's gonna be the one who has superpowers by showing him clearly having superpowers as a kid and then they're like oh no he doesn't it's actually jordan who does it now i'm just confused 
Wait, when did they show Jonathan having superpowers as a kid? In the, like, whole thing, he throws a rock, a toy rocket ship through the walls of their house. No, that's that's Clark. Oh, oh, that's the flashback of Clark doing it. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm stupid. Don't listen to me. <laughs> yeah. I don't know anything. Yeah. I thought that was showing snippets guy. of their kids. Okay. No, no, no. It's, it's like, because that's when he's like, oh, my parents raised me, and I was a handful or something like that. Um, yep, never mind. My bad. My media, yeah, my, my media literacy is is zero right now. <laughs> um, yeah. Matt's top ten list of characters that almost ruined the movie that they were in. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, um, you know, you, you you got the the bit where he's at the party and he kisses the girl who he was into, but she had a boyfriend, and then the two brothers start getting beat up. I will say, uh, for for what it not to like be this guy, but yeah. like. She was leading him right the fuck on. Come on. <laughs> I was thinking that too. I was just like, man. Like, yeah, like, I, not I, your I get phone. what you're saying. His phone. Like, oh well, God. if you're not interested in either of them because you have a boyfriend, why does it matter whose phone you get? You fucking harlot. <laughs> oh, spoiler alert. She breaks up with her boyfriend in a couple episodes. Really? Yeah. The, the boyfriend that we saw on screen for a whole 10 seconds? Yeah. Man, I was so invested in that relationship. <laughs> But like, yeah, they, and well, one thing I will say about the brothers, and I, I'm an only child, so I guess I don't know how, I, I guess I can't really say this with a ton of authority, but they do feel like a very real, like, sibling dynamic. Like, they butt heads a lot, but they still, like, clearly care about each other. Um, Jonathan is, is almost, he's, he's kind of a dick to Jordan, but at the same time can be kind of like, you know, looking out. But he, like, it. jumps in to defend yeah, him exactly, and stuff. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'm just like, and I, I like that. Like, I feel like they have a dynamic that feels at least very real to me. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I do like that. Yeah, I mean, there's, it's, I think it's a little typical, but it's, it works fine. I don't really have a problem with that. Again, I just, it's just such a particular choice um, the, that, like, I'm just, I would not have made that choice. Like, if I was in the writing room and someone was like, okay, what if we give them twins? I'd be like, no. <laughs> Don't, that, let's not. <laughs> um, and so, otherwise, like, it's just a decision I don't like, but it's being handled, at least in the pilot, as, about as well as I think you could. Like, maybe that was a mandate and they're just making it work kind of thing. Um bothers me how much jordan looks like one of my actual friends from high school though oh yeah? yeah he looks exactly like a buddy of mine named luke from high school like it is it is uncanny um but i mean it's nice that they're actually played by like 16 year olds that's nice no nah, i really wanted like a 24 year old to, to be like dad can i go to the mall <laughs> <laughs> one thing that's funny to me I, I caught like two like this has nothing to do with like the story or whatever but like Jonathan wearing a U of M shirt is fucking funny to me. Um, I don't know why I just find that amusing because I almost went there, I guess. And then mm. um, fucking the CW music choices are always my favorite thing. So like you have that great scene and I, and I almost say great ironically of Jordan playing Injustice mm -hmm. with, with Flake by Fiddler of all things in the background um which is amusing to me uh as someone who who knows fiddler but like the song choices of just as clark is like walking out of the room and the song's just like you're a flake and i'm just like oh my god cw <laughs> does not know what subtlety means and i love it <laughs> They're just like, okay, so his dad's like kind of flaking on him. What's that song kids are listening to today that we could, we could play right there? Ah, this is perfect. Ah, it's gonna fucking it's gonna blow their minds when they when they realize the connection. Um, so deep. So deep. I don't know. Like, it's like <laughs> the same love. It's like the level of deep as like all the songs in in the Suicide Squad. It's like that level. <laughs> like that yeah, that's exactly. Where, where they like. Okay, so we're we're at like this prison in the south. Oh, I got I got the perfect song. There is a house in New Orleans. <laughs> oh yeah, man, this is so fucking good. Good job, good job. <laughs> it's like that level. It's great. Yeah, I, I mean, like 
this is the stupidest thing, but like I, I was legit caught up on this. I always try to think about like the 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 dynamics, and I've not played Injustice, so maybe maybe they could get away with this. But like, so he's played Injustice two. He's got the DLC with Raiden in yeah. it. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. Does Injustice or Injustice two ever like say Clark Kent in it? Like, do they, do they, because I know this, they'd have to, because the story of Injustice 1 is that, like, Lois Lane dies because of the Joker, so, like, the, what the fuck is that game in that universe? Yeah, that's, you know? that's my favorite thing, is, like, because they have something similar in, like, Spider-Verse, where he's got a Spider-Man comic book, and I always love mm-hmm. that, because I'm like, yeah, if superheroes were real, we would still have, like, video games and comic books based off of them. But is it just, like, fucking guesswork as to, like, what the story is? Like, it's just, it's always amusing to me. So I'm just like, yeah, I don't, like, it's one of those things where it's just like, okay, he's playing Injustice, and or, he's really just playing a video game where Superman is a character, basically, which is totally mm-hmm. fine. But if you know that that's Injustice, then you're suddenly just like, well, wait a minute, how that can't actually be Injustice, because that would require intimate knowledge of Superman's life. Mm-hmm. Great, I love it. It's it's really funny though. It amu- it like that whole scene, that like whole introduction scene with Jordan. I was just like, ah, oh, this is so good. I love it. <laughs> Superman's it's, Superman's it's, overrated. Playing, or whatever. Yeah, I'm playing overrated. I'm playing Raiden. I'm playing Raiden. <laughs> it's, um, it's fucking like you can't even give, like you you don't even know that you heard him, but you heard. Yeah, him, exactly. You know? It's great. I love it. Um. <laughs> Poor Martha, yeah, it's... she dies. That's sad. Yep, poor Jonathan, he dies in the fucking opening credits. There's a rich tradition of killing off Jonathan Kent. Um, and this movie, or this this pilot, just rips that band-aid off real quick. Um, they usually like build up to it and make it like an emotional scene, but no, it's just... Oh yeah, by the way, my dad died. When did um, that like become a thing? Because I I know John- I think it's with with the Reeve movie. Yeah, like I know um, Jonathan is n- is not dead in like animated series, which is like more of what I know of Superman. I, I haven't read a ton of Superman comics, and like I think that like when the Reeve movie did it, and they're like, okay, so Superman's dad dies of a heart attack, and he has to learn that he can't save everyone, that he has limits. I think people are just like, that's such a good idea. We should just do that now. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, no, I mean, pretty much. That's like, it's it's a really great addition to the lore. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But it's just, it's it's funny to me that they they just keep trying, um, keep trying to to like work it in there further and further and further yeah. um that it's it's like it's almost like a checkbox now mm-hmm. um so yeah now that 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 stuff's good um all right is there anything else we want to talk about with this one i don't think so uh i think we pretty much covered our bases um i'd, I'd recommend it yeah yeah I'd, um i would too i know like they they did like those five episodes and then they took quite a break from it from the the looks of things i think it's starting up again later this month um so that's cool um Mm -hmm. i don't know if i'm gonna watch the other episodes or not i might wait till the first season's like fully done before i do yeah um that's how i tend to go whenever i did get into the cw things is they they tend to play better for me as a season as opposed to watching them episode by episode like week to week yeah um but that that might just be for me um i don't know uh if if this continues maybe eventually i'll get that wonder woman show that'd be nice wasn't there like a yeah there was a pilot for a wonder woman show that was terrible or something it's it's not the worst thing in the world okay fair i haven't actually seen it i've just heard things so Oh no, it's it's not good. Certainly, <laughs> it's it's very strange. She has two secret identities. Um, it's it's a she's got like a fleet of planes. Fascinating. She murders the shit out of a couple guys. Like it's it's not good. Fascinating. It's not the worst thing ever because it's directed and and written by David E. Kelly, and so David E. Kelly's just got like a level of pull 
And so you get, like, fucking Dr. Phil talking about Wonder Woman in, in, in like, a scene. And it's just, there's there's something magical about that. <laughs> um, I, don't, I think I've still got that burnt onto a DVD somewhere. I might have to watch that again. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, yeah. It was where she couldn't decide whether she was going to be wearing pleather pants or pleather shorts. Yeah, I have seen the, like, her suit from it, and it looks bizarre, but... Mm-hmm. We're not reviewing yeah, that right now. One day, one day. Um, all right. Well, yeah, I think that's gonna do it. Uh, I don't even fucking know whose pick anything is anymore. <laughs> Having four people, oh. usually only two of whom show up, has thrown off the entire way that things are done around here. Cause like last time it was Alfie's, and it was yours. What was the episode before? What was what was the episode before the one Alfie and I just did. Um, um, was that it? was the Wonder Woman one with the the piece of clay that you weren't there for. Um, Wait. Or no, you were there yeah, for that, was, that one. That was yeah, Steve, Alfie wasn't was there for Steve's that one. That was pick, and we did the two-part Wonder Woman story. Okay. So now it is tis mine again. Um, and I need, a, I need to do a topic. Um... <sighs> I don't know. What do I, what do I want to talk about? Yummy. Uh, I, I don't want to talk about you, Matt. That, that'd that be weird oh, to just do an episode talking about Matt. Oh, man. That'd be, I'd be honored. <laughs> I don't know. I can talk about, I mean, I can would talk you about though? myself at length. Would you, though? If, like, if we just like started... Yeah, this fucking Matt guy. Useless. Um... <laughs> Oh, um, okay, you know, I'm just, I'm just, like, looking at my Twitter here, and there's, there's an image of fucking Scarlet Witch and Stephen Strange, so, this will be great. Oh, boy. I want to talk about, like, expectations, um, fan expectations, fan, um, speculation and, and stuff, like, that whole thing of, you know how, like, Scarlet Witch had had all these fan theories surrounding it and then the ending came out and everyone was kind of disappointed that it wasn't like all their theories you know i want to talk about like that that whole thing yeah like Um, having expectations before something comes out and then like theorizing as it's coming out and how that affects your reception to what actually happens and whatnot yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I don't I don't know, there's some there's some interesting stuff to dive into on that one. Um yeah. Alright everyone, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'm the philosopher. Did we give a rating? Oh, no. Fuck. Uh I I give Superman and Lois um four out of five uh nuclear meltdowns ripped from other Superman material but done better. Uh I give it four out of five that's literally what I was going to use. I was going to use four out of five icebergs, but I'm going to go with four out of five uh, Raidens. There you go. <laughs> He's better than Superman dead. He's Raiden so, oh my kick God. Superman's ass. Yeah, Superman's a fucking lame pussy. Uh, See, I play but now I'm wondering, like, is fucking Raiden, like, like a thing in this world, too? Is like, or like, is Raiden just a video game character? Yeah, like, character? Mortal Kombat must exist, like, as a franchise, right? Like, does it? Or, or, or is, is Raiden, or is, like, like, another supervillain in the universe? <laughs> no, no, like, what if Raiden's, like, like the, the fucking Mortal Kombat's just a thing in this universe? Like, it's just, it's just a known thing. Yeah. Just like Superman is. Like, that's a weirder reality <laughs> now. <laughs> That'd be so good. Oh, man. Um, all right, yeah, so until next time, I'm the philosopher. Uh, I'm the Superman erotica lover. I think there's there's quite a bit about that. Yeah, too. I'll I'll go look at uh, Cedric. I think has some comedy Superman erotica panels floating around. I really liked when people tried to cancel Cedric for making Wonder Woman Superman comic jokes LOL. about them fucking. Lol. Yeah, like, he he almost got canceled for oh, it. It was fuck. so funny. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, and we are your geeky gentlemen, and we will be discussing things.